big moron! Hey, moron! Duh! Look at me! I'm the Wooa Water Boy, dude! Well, good morning, good people. It is finally freaking Friday. Mark Holmes here, of course, with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Hope everybody's going to have a great day and going into having a great weekend. We are getting so much closer. This week is almost in the books, which means we are one more week closer, closer to the Cowboys getting to training camp where we will be talking about. We sitting here, I supposed to be the franchise player and we're in here talking about practice. I mean, it, listen, yeah, we're talking listen, about listen. Practice. practice, not a game, not a game, not a game. We we'll, be, we'll be talking about practice. Thank God. <clears throat> I can't wait. I can't wait. In fact, less than a month from right now, the Cowboys will have their first preseason game against the Rams. And we'll be there bringing you all the action. We'll be there when they end up having their practice scrimmage. Yes, we'll be there. We will be there with our buddy, Law Nation, and we'll see who else will be there with us. I literally cannot wait. I am sick and tired of all of the talk that's just out there. You know, Mike McCarthy is on the hot seat and got to get to the NFC Championship game. Dak Prescott, he's done with the Cowboys and so on. And C.D. Lamb, is he a number one? Does he deserve to get paid? Micah Parsons, is. I'm, I'm just tired of all of it. I'm just tired of all of it. But from time to time, you get a little chink in the armor of the diss of Dak Prescott. And this is an interesting one. Harry Douglas, seemingly, it's, it's almost comical where people will try and go through and question what you actually say and try and find a way to clean it up. And that's what Molly Quorum did. Let's listen to this for a second here. Okay, listen. Who do you think is the best quarterback in that conference? For me, it's Dak Prescott. You're looking at a guy who was top two when it com comes to uh, touchdowns, QBR, quarterback rating, completion percentage, but in third and passing yards. Uh, also, you look at the athleticism, right? And I think last year we started to see a little bit oh, more like, of that, uh, a year removed from that injury of being able to extend plays with his legs, find C.D. Lamb for explosive plays, mm -hmm. be able to be an extension of the run game as well, which I think now – I'm still concerned about that because they didn't address that need when it, they brought it back Ezekiel Elliott, but I think he's more so of the third down, short yardage, be more better in the tight red zone type of running back, but Dak Prescott can extend plays and he can improvise Wait, on, if a play breaks you down. You think Dak Prescott is the best quarterback in the, not the NFC East, in the NFC? In the NFC, I do. Really? Dude. And really, I from what you've seen, I have are, Matthew are, we, are we talking Dude. regular season or are we right. talking playoffs? Do the playoffs count in this I'm, conversation? I'm just talking period. I think Dak Prescott's number one. In the playoffs? Uh, period. I want to look at the... Period. He, he said period. He said period. Now, of course, insert joke. Insert joke and things, but you can't deny the uh, numbers and the things that he's done. I'm sorry, the amount of 450-yard games that he's had, the amount of 400-yard games, the comebacks that they've had. I know the Cowboys have not had the success that everybody seems to think that they should have, and they should have had more success. But the reality is, is the team's had flaws. And we can look through and say, I don't know that San Francisco had a lot of flaws last year. They didn't. Move. I can look and say, I don't think that the – uh, Eagles had a lot of flaws two years ago, and they didn't do it. It takes a lot to get to the top of the mountain, and we all continue to see the Cowboys' lack of urgency when it comes to trying to say, let's bring in a few ringers to make sure we can compete. Let's get a couple of guys to get us over the top. We have the philosophy of we're going to do more with less. We're going to do more with less. Sorry. That's bullshit. And if we all know that we have an ownership that is screwing the pooch when it comes to contracts, 
not able to bring in or have a desire to bring in and believes in position flex. And I talked about position flex last night that is literally killing us because what the Cowboys always try and do is they try and go cheap and say, well, this guy can play two positions. He can play two positions. Yeah, he can play two positions okay. But is he great at any of them? That, my friends, is the problem. Now, so far today, we haven't had any crazy rumors, right? Yesterday, it was C.D. Lamb is getting traded to the Carolina Panthers. Yeah, that's the one. The day before, it was Zeke Elliott might not make the roster. Yeah, okay. Because we have a preference of running backs that are just going to be better. We'll see what today's going to be. I have no idea what's going to come out of left field. Um, but it's funny because we always hear about all of these trade scenarios and the Cowboys have interest in this guy and everything else. And we keep always falling for it. Here's the reality. The Cowboys will bring in some bottom tier guys that are cheap during training camp. They'll eventually get to Dak Prescott, C.D. Lamb, and next year, Micah Parsons. The drama train that is the Dallas Cowboys will continue to roll. And the NFL, talking heads for entertainment purposes only, will continue to denigrate the Dallas Cowboys. And to Molly's point, um, Harry Douglas... He's not the first one to say that Dak Prescott's the number one quarterback in the NFC. He's not. And you sit here and you look in things and say consistency-wise, the Cowboys, most people are expecting to make the playoffs again. The Cowboys make the playoffs four years in a row. Four years in a row. Do you really look at it and say, we got to fire that coach? After what we've been through over the last 29 years. It's insanity if you ask me. So, fact or fiction? He Woody. Dak should sign an extension now and not wait. Fact or fiction? Fiction? Hell no. Like, you're, you're literally months away from unrestricted free agency. They can't tag you. They can't trade you. Like, that's what you want. Any You ask any player. It's the, the goal is to get to unrestricted free agency. Dak shouldn't sign anything until that point. Okay. And he was wearing the walking boot on the boat, which we discussed yesterday. It was just a precaution. So, fiction. Make him wait. <laughs> get Darlington. <laughs> Mike McCarthy needs to reach the NFC Championship game to save his job. Is that fact? We've heard fiction? that before. I'm going to say fact uh, uh, under the disclaimer that I recognize I would have probably said the same thing last year and Jerry Jones still kept him. But it does definitely feel like in the final year of Mike McCarthy's contract with Dak Prescott potentially playing in what it would also be the final year of his contract that the pressure is on like no other. And by the way, you've got Mike Vrabel and Bill Belichick waiting in the wings. That's a good point. Final one, Harry, C.D. Lamb shouldn't show up to camp without a new contract. Is that fact or fiction? I, I'm going fact. When I look at this Dallas Cowboys offense, and Woody, you touched on this earlier, who else are they going to go to there if C.D. Lamb is not out there on that football field? Who else are they going to go to? If you're an opposing defense, who are you scared of outside of C.D. Lamb? The answer is nobody. So, C.D. <laughs> Lamb, don't show up. Demand your money. Make sure you get it. This is a guy that was second in the National Football League in receiving yards, but first in yards after the catch. Especially in an offseason where we've seen receivers get paid a lot of money, and C.D. Lamb statistically better than them coming out of last year. So, Darlington, what's the latest on the contract talks between C.D. Lamb and the Cowboys? 
Well, look, uh, everything that I've been hearing is that CeeDee Lamb is the priority. And I'm not saying that he's the priority over Dak, because we understand Dak is the quarterback of this team, but he is the one that they feel like they can get done the soonest. Now, of course, the question becomes, now that Justin Jefferson has signed his deal and Jamar Chase is still lingering out there for what will be a massive contract of his own, are the Cowboys comfortable going as high as these wide receivers are now coveting? Mm. Uh, of course, if they want to keep him, it's going to have to be well above $30 million dollars the cowboys have to have the power for that or they That's might as the well rate, guys. come to the table at this point it feels like it should get done but right now nothing is imminent yeah look and we talk about with, with every franchise not just the cowboys especially with what we were just saying a second ago about Dak prescott reaching unrestricted free agency which is every player's goal in the nfl but we do this all the time with franchises we talk about that window to win big and financially, with where the Cowboys are, with C.D. Lamb still wanting a new contract, maybe potentially a holdout, and with where Dak is in his career and mm -hmm. financially, Harry, could it actually be a window that's got a really, really good Cowboys team closing just a bit because of the aging and the money? Well, I believe so, because if you're not going to pay your franchise quarterback, then who are you going to go to? Who is the next guy? There you go. The reason why I say you should pay Dak is because he gives you an opportunity. And I understand, folks, he hasn't been the greatest in the playoffs. But I can't ignore that they went 12 and 5, 12 and 5, 12 and 5. Right. And they have been in the heights of the NFC. If you don't have Dak Prescott, if you don't have him being, you know, one of the top quarterbacks in the NFL last year, you were going to go to Cooper Rush? You think Cooper Rush could do what Dak Forget about go. Trey Lance. Prescott? They got Trey Lance. Yeah, but, but he's still a question mark, though. Right. Right? We, we don't know what Trey Lance is going to be. I don't, I don't believe the young man can't play football, but we still, there are question marks all across the board when it comes to Trey Lance. There you go. It's a talk show. <laughs> yeah, it, it really is. I mean, who, who else is there? I always say, who's, who else is it? Who else is it? I, I, it's like, I, who, else, who, who else is it? Like, who you... Like, as much as we admonish Dak Prescott for yeah. his for his his failings in the postseason, who would you else is plug, it? plug one of these backups in? You're going to, I guess, hit the reset button and, and go with a, uh, a, a rookie? But, oh, by the way, you're not going to be drafting high because your team is too good. Wow. So you're not going to be able to get one of these uh, in one of the, the, the elite of the elite quarterbacks in, 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 the, in, the, in, the, in the draft. Mm -hmm. So if you're, if you're the Dallas Cowboys, whether it's now or after the season, you got to try to get a deal done with Dak Prescott. Darlington, get in there. I was just curious, is Damien on tape delay when he's sitting right next to you? Like, is there like a, like a <laughs> two-second delay? I'm sitting here, no, I'm sitting here like, I, I'm <laughs> saying, hey, Jeff, I'm sitting here like, we really having this discussion right now? Like, the disrespect oh, of okay, Dak that Prescott is just sense. crazy. Yep. Like, it, listen, it I understand, about the, 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 I understand the, the postseason and everything, but let's not act like Dak Prescott, at minimum, is a top 10 quarterback. At agree. minimum. I, who, but I who's dis no one up here is disputing. No, top five. Top five? I mean, five? no, no one's up here ten? disputing that. The, the point being that in the NFL, we see, and I'm not saying this is Dak, and I'm yeah. not even saying this is CeeDee Lamb, but in the NFL, we see financial casualties of franchises all the time. Yeah. We see it all the time. Mm -hmm. Cowboys sometimes don't seem to have their finances in order. Well, they need to take a page out of the Philadelphia Eagles book. Which is? They, you need to understand how to structure things, when to pay guys, don't wait to the last minute. Because if you would have got C.D. CD Lamb done, you wouldn't be worried about C.D. Lamb trying to get more than Justin Jefferson. If you would have got Dak Prescott done, it's you, you so wouldn't simple. have to worry about, in my opinion, him trying it, to get it's, $60 it's, million dollars, uh, on the table. Darlington, go. It's also, though, such a fine line because to that point, if you want to talk about the Eagles, look what they did with Carson Wentz. They signed him too early. Like, there is such a fine line when you're a general manager as to when to sign these guys. I don't actually envy uh, the Dallas Cowboys in this situation, but it does feel like they missed the window. And it, go and it goes back to that point we were talking about Jordan Love. Like, pay him now. You better make sure that that snapshot of great is what you're going to be getting. That's exactly uh, right. Speaking of great like the WNBA, it's because we have to. There you go. And that brings you to the question of Jordan Love. You've got one year, one year of film on him. Should he be signed? If we're questioning Dak Prescott, who's been in the playoffs the last three straight years, I don't know how you turn around and say, well, we got to pay Jordan Love. So we'll see what we're going to see. As always, I appreciate you guys. So far, it is a slow Dallas Cowboys news morning. And we'll see what we're going to see. As always, I appreciate you guys. Peace.